Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for question 2 of the math proficiency test. Before we get started, I would really appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss the next videos. I'll assume that you've paused the video and thought about how you would tackle this problem. In this case, we have a rectangular window that measures 4 meters wide by 3 meters high. So we have something that looks like this. So 4 meters wide and three meters high. So that's our window here. And what is the length of the window's diagonal? We're looking for the diagonal here, and that is the length here. And there's a few things that should come to, to mind when you look at this, but the first step to solving any problem before we get started is to know the ba basic theory, the formulas or the what behind what we're going to do. And then step two is the how to actually do the work. So to do this problem, you can notice that really what we have is we have a right triangle. We have something that looks like this and the dimensions are three, four, and the hypotenuse because that's a right triangle and that's the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse in French and we could use Sokotoa and all that jazz, but we don't know the angles. We, it's easier than that. We can use Pythagorean theorem. I put the first three videos here. If you want to review Pythagorean theorem, watch these. But we probably remember that if we have a triangle that with legs A, B, so the two sides are called legs, the diagonal is called the hypotenuse, and C, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to c squared. So just note, I'll draw on this video here. So we have a, b, and c. So if you take that length c, and so maybe I'll use another color. So this, this length is c here. And so then if you take that length and put another length of the same size, the area of this square is c times c base times height, which is c squared. And then the area of this square is a squared and b squared. So the question is, when we start with all that water inside each triangle, so we'll actually watch the video to see what happens here. a squared and b squared combined to make c squared. The two small triangles, uh, uh, squares combined to make the third one Exactly. So if I pause this and start drawing, this is C, the, the two ones are A squared and B squared and the diagonal one is C squared. So if you notice the two squares combined to make the third square, and that's why we have this formula here, A squared plus B squared, the two little squares combined to make the big squares. Perfect. So that's like one way I like to memorize the Pythagorean theorem because it has a nice visual and I can derive it intuitively after that. So now step two is to do the work. Note that we have this triangle, three, four, and we can simply use our formula. We're looking for C essentially, right? The hypotenuse is C. So we have that C squared or I'll keep it in order for now. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So we have that three squared plus four squared is equal to C squared. And three squared is nine plus four squared, that's 16. And then that's C squared. So if I write C squared is equal to nine plus 16, that's 25. And now how do I get rid of a squared, well I can square root it, and notice that we do the plus minus whenever we square root, and that's the square root of 25. And we know that five times five is equal to 25, therefore the square root of 25 is equal to five. And so we can only take the positive, because a length cannot be negative, so we only have C is equal to five. So that means that we have this triangle here, three, 
four and the hypotenuse is five or the diagonal is five and that means it is answer D. The third step of doing any problem is just to build some intuition, to go back and ask ourselves, does this make sense? Well, one little trick I can give you right now is that we have a magic triangle, which is three, four, five, the three, four, five triangle. People use it in construction all the time. And you, you can also have, when you have multiples of these numbers, it also works. So for example, if you have six, eight, 10, it also works and you can test it out, right? You have six squared, which would be 36 plus 64. Is it equal a hundred? And it is. So you can have multiples because all I did here, I did five times two and then here I did three times two and then here I did four times two. So you can try to think about this and the Pythagorean theorem can be useful in many, many applications, it's just about practicing. So if you want to practice a little bit further, you can try to practice with different numbers. So for example, if I give you the hypotenuse of 17 and the leg of, I don't know, a funky number like pi, try to find me the A value. Try to do that for an exercise. What is A? What is A? That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.